Well, hi, everybody. Hi. I, I can't tell you how delighted I am when I walked in this room and saw all of the literary giants in here. And I was a little worried because we have such an exciting weekend with the Final Four. Yay! Yeah. And everything else that goes on in our city of Houston. All the events that are happening down Discovery Green. So we hope that when you leave here, that you'll continue to enjoy our, the events in our fine city. But I thank you for taking time out of uh, your activities to join us here this afternoon to celebrate National, Hist National Poetry Month. It is the 15th anniversary, April marks the 15th anniversary of National Poetry Month. And I couldn't be more delighted with the work that the team has done here at the Houston Public Library to bring to fruition this program. Please help me thank Jennifer Swartz and her team. I'd also like to acknowledge Rich Levy. Rich, where are you? <laughs> and Fran, of course, we'll meet, everyone will meet you later, but thank you for the partnership. I'm particularly delighted about this series because it, it brings national and internationally known poets to our city right here at the Houston Public Library. So we hope that you'll um, log on to HoustonLibrary.org and see all of the events of the month. I think we're all in for a great treat the entire month. And it's now it's with great pleasure that I get to introduce our celebrity reader. I wonder who she is. <laughs> well, she's a graduate of Rice University. <laughs> Writes in the house. Uh, she's an avid reader. Uh, let's see, you know yet? She used to co-own a bookstore. She was a member of city council. She was the former controller. And now she's the mayor of the fourth largest city in the United States. <laughs> Please help me welcome the honorable mayor. I'm really thrilled to see so many folks here, and uh, perhaps a little like Dr. Lawson, I thought, oh, there's so much going on in Houston this weekend. If there are 20 people here, I'll be happy. I am ecstatic <laughs> to see so many folks here uh, today, and uh, thank you. We hope that you will come back for the entire series. Uh, when uh, Dr. Lawson contacted me and said, okay, we want a celebrity reader, and we'll select some poems, for you to read, I said thank you, but um, I actually am a poetry fan. She didn't know that at the time. She's laughing. She didn't know that at the time. Uh, in fact, I used to be a regular at the First Friday Poetry Group, listening to people read. Where's Robert? There you go. And um, so I am, but, but as a celebrity reader, I am uh, uh, intended to tee up people you are really here to listen to. So I won't be here very long, but. Uh, Poetry has a hard job. In my view, what a poem should do is make the synapses fire in a new way. It's that, that, that spark, that connection where I never thought of it that way before. I would have never put those words together in that way. I can picture what's being described um, and I would not have described it that way myself. Or it immediately sends me to my pen to want to write it down and, and to start another uh, thread of poetry. Now, I am a huge fan of Houston's uh, poet laureate, former poet laureate, uh, Vassar Miller, and I have a well-worn copy of My <laughs> Wheels of Love. Uh, but I also am uh, a fan of, uh, this is uh, Richard Babin, or Beban, I think it's Babin, I've not known. It's called uh, What the Heart Weighs, and some of you know that uh, I have special needs kids that are adopted out of, uh, from CPS. And so uh, this one struck me the first time I read it. It's called, 
My parents watched the July 4th parade. Perhaps they were both dyslexic, never clear on the difference between marital and martial. <laughs> Thought the wedding march was by John Philip Sousa or Francis Scott Key. Bombs bursting in the living room, kitchen, beat of the muffled drums, sharp staccato racket of sticks on rims, crack of ribs, crack of small arms fire, small children abandoned in the corners like spent shell casings. The stars and stripes forever imprinted, stars as blows to the skull, stripes from the slashing leather belt across the backs of thighs, red welts, white skin, blue bruises, never shown at school where you stood for the Pledge of Allegiance and learned how fine a country this is and why our parents fought so hard to keep it free. Learned the price of war was high, but teachers said it was worth it. Look at all we had that children in other countries wanted. It's that, whoa, that's, that's what a poem should do. And one more, perhaps a little bit lighter. Wouldn't be hard, would it? This is called A Different Theory of Relativity. We came to this national park to photograph wildlife, flying continent to continent an hour by boat, the lodge exclusive and remote. Now we tramp along a bluff, a bluff above the river, a remnant strand of huts beside our path. We plunge from jungle darkness into light, a patch of mud, a dirt floored one room shack, and back again. Then a glimpse. Que es, we ask a little girl of four or so. She shakes her head, scuffs bare feet, and looks away. Finally, she nods assent, and we stride into her clearing. Close, it has a grotesque beauty. The body caught our eyes, a slick and lurid purple-red, each muscle taut, claws splayed, the bulging eyes milky, glowing in the sunset, earless head oddly round, a little larger than our pets. The dappled skin is, pinned, skin is pinned, flesh side up, to a weathered board. Ocelot. Poor K, we ask in outrage, snapping pictures with our Nikons. She shrugs, tugs a tattered dress. Se comió las gallinas. It ate the chickens. That one's mine. Oh.